What up, pips? It's your boy ML3000 in the house. Yo, back with another Genj video. So, yo, here we <coughs> uh, yeah. So, as you can tell, I'm still working on a good way of introducing myself at the beginning of these videos. But um, now that's out of the way, thank God, I can talk about the actual subject matter of this video. And that is, of course, satellites. KSP 1.2 is out. It's in pre release. It's available to the public, guys. St stop complaining in the comments now. Just Google it. You can Google it. You can get it. It's available. You can Google it. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, in part in part one of this frankly groundbreaking and innovative and cutting edge and quite frankly astounding series of guides, we established geosynchronous orbital relay network around Kerbin. However, probes that are on the side of Mun or Minmus that face away from Kerbin will not be fully controllable as they will not be connected to the relay until today. So, quick plan here. We're going to be establishing a triangular network of three satellites around both the Mun and Minmus. Uh, the Mun is going to be pretty standard, sort of nothing special affair, whereas Minmus will be another geostationary orbit network. Now, I know what you're thinking. Matt, you bedazzling space stallion, why is synchronous orbit around Minmus necessary? Well, I'm glad you asked, random viewer. It's for absolutely no reason at all, apart from the fact that it looks really cool. So, if you can't be bothered to fine tune your altitudes and get it right, then it's not really a problem. Although, it might be cool to build bases underneath each satellite if you do have a synchronous orbit. Anyway, so here we are in orbit. I fitted lights to those top fuel tanks just so you can see the payload more easily. I can't wait for Planet Shine to get updated so that I can go back to making videos where it's possible to actually see what's going on when the scene is in any way dark. Now I chose these here relay dishes because despite them being the smallest ones in the game, they will be more than powerful enough for what we need them for. As you know from my 1.2 preview video, or as you may know if you watched my 1.2 preview video, uh, two satellites can communicate with each other over a distance equal to the square root of the product of their power ratings. So like all probes and pods have a 5000 meter range antenna built into them, which means that the antennas on my relays, which have a power rating of 5 billion, can easily communicate with any probe up to 5 million meters away since the square root of 5,000 times 5 billion equals 5 million. This is more than enough for the Mun or Minmus relays, given that the highest altitude we'll be using in this video is a Mun apoapsis of a measly 2.1 million meters. The relays themselves will be able to talk to Kerbin, nor anywhere else for that matter, via one of the three geostationary Kerbin satellite relays, which each have a dish with a power rating of 100 billion, easily enough to receive signals from Minmus. Uh, just a quick note here. Um, I usually do these missions beforehand just to kind of do a rehearsal, just to make sure they work, and I realised I'd left kind of take one of this mission still in orbit. So this is me just uh, destroying uh, the evidence uh, for the practice mission. So just, just, just ignore this bit. Now the reason we're not going to be going into synchronous orbit around the Mun is because even if we are orbiting along the very edge of its sphere of influence, our orbital speed will still be too high. If we were to go any faster, we would end up on an escape trajectory, so a higher and slower orbit is not possible, unfortunately. The unfortunate fact is that the Mun's sphere of influence is simply too small for us to get into a synchronous orbit, as the theoretical altitude needed for a synchronous orbit is way beyond its sphere of influence. I'm just going to take this opportunity to demonstrate that uh, because we're on a collision course with the Mun, this is a great opportunity to detach that top tank so it'll just be destroyed and hit the Mun, rather than be left in orbit. Anyway, back to the issue of uh, not being able to get into synchronous orbit around the Mun. Uh, it's not the uh, only body in the system uh, with this issue. For example, Moho and all of Jules moons actually, they can't have objects placed in synchronous orbit around them because their sphere of influence is just too small and so any objects that would need to be in synchronous orbit would need to be higher in altitude than their sphere of influence permits, if that makes sense. <laughs> so here we are at the Mun. Now, in order to separate our satellites out by 120 degrees and thus creating an equilateral triangle shaped relay structure, we need to take our orbital period of the mothership, that is, how long it takes the mothership to complete one orbit, divide it by three, as there are a total of three satellites, and multiply that number by two. Unfortunately, in order to get all these figures, we need Kerbal Engineer, which doesn't work in KSP 1.2. And so, we are going to have to resort to the dreaded, the feared, the despicable, Mathematics. <laughs> or, you could fire up your backed up version of KFD 1.05 and hyper edit a ship into moon orbit with the same apoapsis and periapsis as the ship in your 1.2 save, and then work out what altitudes you need based on the Kerbal Engineer readout. Then just jot it all down on paper or on the side of a vodka bottle, and then you can reload KSP 1.2 and bish bash bosh, maths. Now we're not actually deploying our satellites uh, 
from a perfectly circular orbit. You can see our apoapsis and periapsis are separated by about 7,000 meters. And the reason for this is because the decouplers they're attached to actually provide a little bit of acceleration for them. So if we just go ahead and detach our decouplers, uh, what we'll see is we'll end up in a more or less circular orbit. Uh, this is basically done through trial and error. Uh, I just deployed the satellites and then looked at how much speed they'd gain and I then quick loaded and adjusted my orbit accordingly. So I'll just let the video do the rest of the talking here since it's all fairly self-explanatory and you've already seen this sort of thing in the last satellite relay network video I made so let's move on. In in just a second at least. I mean I feel like I should at least show the first satellite being sort of set up. As you can see we've kind of set up that period nicely so when we, you can see if we just activate the entire communications network interface, <laughs> uh, we can kind of see that we've already got that nice sort of at least one side of the triangle all set up so we can just accelerate now. What you won't see in this video is the sort of long time I spent setting up getting the orbits exactly circular and just making sure that the uh, the orbits of all the three satellites were pretty much the same. Unfortunately, it's hard to get the orbital periods all lined up because again, we haven't got Kerbal Engineer. So until Kerbal Engineer gets updated or something like MechJeb that also gives you the readouts, um, it's just a case of monitoring your network and just making sure that the satellites don't drift too uh, close to each other or far apart, whichever you prefer. Anyway, now let's move on to Minmus. <laughs> So we're going to deploy our satellites in the same manner, compensating with the fact that our decouplers will provide some thrust to the pods by having an ever so slightly eccentric orbit. Uh, for synchronous orbit, we're going to need an altitude of exactly 357.94 kilometers. And bada bing bada boom, it's all falling together. Sorry, I'm just sort of fast forwarding this bit because you kind of know how to get orbits, I assume now. I mean, this kind of stuff isn't hard. Yeah, this is kind of funny. I realized I was orbiting the wrong way around, so I had to quickly just uh, change direction, but no, <laughs> no big deal. It's just patience, really. As, you, as long as you're patient enough to fine tune, sort of warp around, it's very easy to. It's very hard to screw this sort of thing up. We can just test out that we're roughly in geosynchronous orbit before performing any complex moves, and hey, look at that! Neat! <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not quite equatorial, which means that Minmus will appear to librate back and forth, as you can kind of see there. Um, I mean, we can alter our sort of inclination slightly and get it perfect, but I'm not really that fussed about getting this dead on because, again, it's not essential or even useful at all to be in synchronous orbit around Minmus. Uh, so we'll just say it's good enough. At the end of the day, there's absolutely no point to establishing synchronous orbit around Minmus, at least in the stock game, other than for elite skills points with a Z on skills and points. And just here you can see we're just destroying the mothership, just we have no debris left in orbit. Man, I really love Minmus. Seriously, it's one of my favourite places to visit. The moon is so like boring by comparison, and Minmus is ridiculously easy to reach and land on compared to the Mun and Juna. And the landscape, it's so it's so brilliant and varied. I'm getting off topic here, but whatever. If it were up to me, I'd only make Minmus SSTOs, but apparently you guys like making Mun ones, so you know, whatever. I just like Minmus. And on that note, I think this video is pretty much a wrap. We now have pretty much the whole of Kerbin covered, though we may still have slight difficulty communicating with extreme poles of the Mun. I mean, that being said, I've literally visited the Mun poles, like, once. So, you know, MBD, MBD. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. There will be a link on screen to the previous episode, as well as a couple of other videos. If you like these sorts of things, then these are the sorts of things you'll like. I think I'd like to end this video on a joke. Um, how do you get a baby astronaut to sleep? You rock it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that was terrible. Maybe, maybe I should apologise for it.